Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody's glad to be alive. Give the Lord a hand clap. You enjoying this cooler weather? Well, thank God for it. Good to see you. Good to be here. It's my privilege and honor to participate and pray for these little ones. It's just amazing how God can bring things about. So we give him thanks. I want to get right into the word of God because of the time constraints. So stand with me in honor, not to me, but to God's word. I feel like the Lord has given me a message for us today. And it's not the words that, uh, that I will say. It's the words that the Bible will say. I remember as a kid, we used to think learning our ABCs, and one of them was for the letter B is my book and heart must never part. And for the letter H, it's heaven to find the Bible mind. And it's kind of amazing for the letter A, it's in, in Adam's fall, we sinned all. And sin is to blame for all of our problems as a country, as a world. And we've inherited that tendency to sin. But thank God for a Savior. I said, thank God for a Savior. Thank God for a Savior. Some of us would have been in in prison today had not been for the mercy of God. So I'm reading just one reading from Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29. And it's the words of Jesus as he gave a invitation to which he still is giving today. Please note these words. In this time of stress, pressure, chaos, any kind and every kind of political unrest the world over. And by the way, I hope you'll vote this week if you haven't voted yet. I'm not telling you how or who, but please vote. And if you don't vote, please don't complain. <laughs> Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight said, Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Everybody that's found that to be true said amen. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest under your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. You wasn't made to be sinful. And you'll find that it's not hard at all to live for God. You just have to have a made up mind. Note what he said, please. Please listen to this. In verse 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. We've tried everything else. I think we ought to try Jesus. Come unto me. Still true today. Let's raise our hands and give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I love you. You may be seated. Jesus, in many 
places gave assurance that his way is the best way, is the right way, is the good way. In fact, it's the only way. In John 10, verse 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That was true then and it's still true today. In John 1, verse 10, the writer said, He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. The word there is... I, uh, he gave you power that is the authority or the right to become the son of God. So don't let anything or anybody tell you you can never amount to anything. You've messed up too much and you're destined to be nothing but a failure. Jesus said differently. And if you will get, come to him, he'll give you the authority to become a son of God. Peter talked about this in his epistle, 1 Peter 1, 23, when he said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So you don't join God's church. You don't just raise your hand and confess Christ as the Savior. You have to be born again. Jesus said that three times. In seven verses in John 3, 3, 3, 5, and 3, verse 7. I think he meant it. And so Peter elaborated on that. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass. That's what we are, just grass. Look at your neighbor and say you're nothing but grass. And I'm not talking about the kind you smoke either. <laughs> For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Could I hear you say amen to that? Amen. And so... Over and over we get this idea that Jesus wants you to come to him. In Revelation 3 and verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I wondered how many times has the Lord knocked on your door and tried to get you through an impulse to read the Bible, to pray, and not be so busy you blink at your own taillights. If you're too busy to worship and come to church, you're just too busy. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you're too busy to read your Bible, you're too busy. And so he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. He won't barge his way into your life. You've got to want him to come in. But if you'll invite him, he will show up. Praise the Lord, everybody. Over and over again, this idea. In Isaiah 118, the Lord God said, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Listen to these words. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Listen to these words. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. And so the decision is yours. While you have time, while you have opportunity, while you're still in the land of the living, reason together with God. 
That's what an altar is for. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when I read like Luke 19, 10, it said, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And it's true today, just like it was true back then. Lost. If you've ever been lost, it's kind of a forlorn feeling. I'll tell you what that means. Second Corinthians 4 verse 3 said, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. I heard a man preach it on the radio many years ago. And uh, he said, Now all you out there in radio land that are saved and don't know it, I want you to know something. Now I, I say, you may, you may be lost and don't know it, but you're not saved and don't know it. Amen. Amen. Let me go back to that, 2 Corinthians 4, 3. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The devil don't want you to have light. He wants you to stumble around in darkness. But Jesus has come that you might have light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's what the writer talked about. For we preach not ourselves. I hope that never gets to the point where we use the personal pronouns excessively. I don't care what you've accomplished. You need to give God credit for it. I don't care how good you've been. You need to give God credit for it. Amen. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Listen to these words. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Think about that. We're not worth a whole lot. Used to be, it was about $7.50. Maybe it's a little more because of inflation now. But you're not worth as much as you think you are. But when you get the Holy Spirit, you get a treasure. He'll be a healer. He'll be a helper. He'll be a guide. He'll be a blesser. He'll help you out of vexing situations. So come unto me, he said. I still believe Jesus has the answer to every problem. And he is the answer to every problem. Amen. Amen. I said amen. Now, God loves you. I believe that with all my heart. Listen to these words comes out of 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 when it talks about who will have all men to be saved all men regardless of the color of your skin the content of your character or if as some of us were raised in a cave by an old mama lion scratch and clawed our way through life and think that's the way to live but the point is I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he wants you saved, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. He said again, if if you don't mind me, I'll I'll give it to you out of 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Listen to this. But it's long-suffering to usward. Now, some of you ladies think you've put up with a lot with your husband. Maybe some of you husbands think you've put a lot up a lot with your wife, and some of you may think you put a lot you've put up a lot with your children. But think how much God has had to put up with. Come on, some of us used to be honky tonkers. Come on, or hubcap stealers, or or liars or thieves or drunkards or revilers he's been good to us I said he's been good to us 
It's the best thing that's ever happened to us. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish. There's not a person here today God wants to see to go to hell. I don't care. There's not a person living in the whole wide world that God wants to send to hell. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so that's what the Bible says. And if you'll come to him, you'll find it'll change your life. It'll change your life. I said it'll change your life. You see, when God created Adam in Genesis 2 and 7, he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. Now when Adam died, his body went back to dust because 319 of Genesis and God said, for dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return. But you have a soul. It came from God. God will never die. Now listen to this. And your soul will never die in the sense that we put your body in the ground. You're going to live forever somewhere. Now, you are a triunity of a body, soul, spirit, according to First Thessalonians 5.23. I pray God your whole body and soul and spirit be preserved, be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the word of God is so powerful. Listen to these words. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even, listen to these words, to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. See, the, the word of God knows your soul, it knows your body, it knows your spirit. Now, at death, your body will go back to dust and your soul, listen to this. I base this on Genesis thirty-five eighteen, when Rachel, the beloved wife of Jacob died, the Bible said, and she died in childbirth, that and as her soul was in departing, and then it said, for she died. So at death, your soul leaves your body. Now, what do you say? Listen to this. Ezekiel 18 and 4, God said, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth it shall die. What do you mean by that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is judgment coming. God knows exactly when and where you have rejected him over and over and over. How he has knocked on your door, how he has, through many people and circumstances, tried to get your attention. You see, uh, when it comes down to it, it's in God's hands. I'm going to prove that. Proverbs 16.33 said, The lot is cast into the lap, but the disposing thereof is of the Lord. God said, this, They're mine, and the soul that sinneth shall die. Now, the point being is, You've got to settle this sin question somewhere or it'll settle it for you if you die without repentance. Just that simple. You see, Scripture has, has said over and over, and I won't give you a bunch of them, but just give me, let me just pull two or three out of my thinking. In Psalm 51, 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. And this is a little one. This is one that's a little hard to digest, but it's so true anyway. 
Psalm 58 and 3 said, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. That's the reason you need to keep your kids in church. I know I was raised in church. I was left in church, asleep on a bench, and they'd forgot me. <laughs> they locked the place up and went home. And they, they kind of think, well, what? And they had to come back and get me, of course. And I, you know, I was raised in a preacher's home. I remember going swimming in the baptistry. <laughs> and just as a kid, you know. Back in those days, they gave wine for communion, not grape juice. And I, 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 can, I can see it now on the shelf. As you go down to the basement, was all kinds of things, and they would put the little demitasse cups that you served the wine for communion. After it was over with, they'd put them up on the shelf there. There's always be a little bit left in a bunch of them. I was a wine bibber. That's right. Oh, I can tell you a bunch of stuff, you know. My dad flew the coop and left us all high and dry. And uh, the preacher that we had, I kept going to church. Uh, One Sunday morning, I told him, I said, tonight, and we had Sunday morning and Sunday night service. I said, tonight I'm going to go to the altar. And he he got up and announced, he said, you're not going to believe who's going to come to the altar tonight. That didn't stop me. Because in my heart, I knew I needed to be in that altar. In my heart, I knew I needed to have what God wanted me to have. And I knew that I could come to Jesus and everything would be all right. I said, and everything would be all right. Come on. I said, and everything will be all right. You got to make a move. You can't sit there like a hoot owl on a tombstone. You got to make a move. Don't wait too late. Don't wait too late. And over and over and over and over. Scripture talks about both Jew and Gentiles. They are all under sin. That's Romans 3 and 9. Verse 10, as it is written, there's none righteous. No, not one. Verse 12, there's none that doeth good. No, not one. Verse 14, their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Sounds like today. And then, of course, 3.23 of Romans said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the basic meaning of sin is missing the mark, coming short. In Galatians 3.22, it said the scripture hath concluded all under sin. Thank God that you've been a decent, good, law-abiding citizen, but you're still under sin. You got to deal with that sin question somewhere, someplace. In the book of Acts 17, verse 30, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at. Listen to this. Please listen to this. But now, everybody say, but now, yeah. commandeth all men everywhere to repent. All men means all men. It's a commandment everywhere to repent. It's repent or else. Luke Luke 13, 3 and verse 5, two times Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Please listen to this. I felt like God spoke to me to give you some of this. Back to Acts 17 and 30. Commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because, you know why? Because he hath appointed a day. We used to sing that song. There's a great day coming. A great day coming. A great day coming by and by. Judgment's coming, folks. 
because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men that he hath raised him from the dead. You're going to have to face your sin either here or there. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to the white throne of judgment. If there's any way I can detour around that, I want to take it. And if you're smart, you'll do the same. You don't want to face the things that you've done that you shouldn't have. You see, when Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom in Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, without me going into that in depth, he gave the church the authority to deal with the sin question. You won't find that in college. You might learn about geology, but you won't learn about the rock of ages. You might learn about architecture, but you don't learn about the chief cornerstone. It's the church that has that authority to to preach to you. And he said, what you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. What you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. That means simply when we take you to the water after you repent and baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, God's going to honor this bargain. He's going to wash every sin away. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's going to wash every sin away. You see, 1 John 1, 8 said, if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves. Quit deceiving yourself. And the truth's not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, and that's kind of the way people deal today, they always blame someone else how they was raised or what other people have done and they're not accountable for what they've done themselves. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. You're not going to make God a liar. We make him a liar and his word is not in us. Please listen to me. There's a way to deal with this. Let me step into a real cautious light, but anyhow, it's out of the reading of 1 Peter 4, 17. Let me back up. Let's go to 1 Timothy 5, 24 first. That reading says, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before the judgment. And some men, they follow after. So your sins are either going or coming. You can refuse me. You can walk out of this building. Go do what you ever want to do. But your sins is going to get up and walk out with you. You can move to wherever, whenever, and however. But your sins are going to move with you. Somewhere you will face them. But God has made a way where you can send them on ahead to judgment. When you can settle the old account right here, right now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Here it comes. 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You hear that? You need to be in church that preaches the Bible as the unadulterated word of God that preaches holiness and righteousness, honesty and integrity, purity. Hallelujah. You need to raise your children where they can hear from a pastor that will teach you how to walk, how to live, how to treat one another. Praise the Lord. We've all made our mistakes. But we find out that we can let judgment begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? 
you can do it. Some of the most beautiful words you'll ever hear is out of Hebrews 4.14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Please listen to this. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If you come to this altar and surrender yourself to Jesus, you will find mercy. Here today, now, and not have to worry about facing your sins after you die. Praise the Lord. You can send every one of them up ahead. Amen, everybody. Amen, everybody. Amen. But you got to come boldly. You can't be timid or backward. They're your sins. They followed you everywhere you've ever moved to. You got to deal with them somewhere. Deal with them where God said, I give the church authority to let judgment begin at the house of God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, God, have mercy. Let me just kind of wind this down. I hesitate to get into this, but it's true. And the Lord's already given it to me to give to you, so here she comes. It's going to happen. Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and earth fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Think about that. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Please listen to this. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Listen to this. This is the second death. The second death is conscious torment in a lake of fire forever and ever. You see, according to Matthew 25, verse 41, Scripture said, Hell, or Gehenna, the lake of fire, was prepared for the devil and his angels. God never did intend for you to go there. The devil never has intended anything else but for you to go there. And so, if you'll be born again, you'll have to face that second death. Simply put, if you're born once, you'll die twice. If you don't obey God's word, you're going to be experiencing that second death. I don't know about you, but I... I'd rather listen to Revelation 20, verse 6, when it said, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. I want to have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Get out of here, second death. Get out of here, hell and damnation. Get out of here, devil. I've settled the old account. I've repented of my sins. I've went to the altar. I've obeyed God's word. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. My sins have been sent on up ahead. And every wrong that I've ever said or done since then, I have sent it on up ahead. Aren't you glad for that? 
Please hear those words. It was a, uh, a blessing that it, God told the church of Smyrna in Revelation 2, verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Then that last little phrase said, He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Yeah. I didn't give you all of Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he hath part in the first resurrection on such a second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Everything is waiting on you this side of the cross. God wants to loose the chains that bind. God wants to deliver you from any bad habits you may have. God wants to clean up your soul, your spirit, your mind, your heart, your language, your conduct. He can do it, ladies and gentlemen. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. But you got to come unto me, Jesus said. Come unto me, come unto me. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. It's your decision. But you need to do it today. I don't know why, but I had that. That unction. And I've preached too many times not to know when God's trying to deal with. He knew who was going to be here. I just plead with you. Open the door and let him in. I plead with you. Repent while you still can. We have plenty of saints that will pray with you. Let's stand together as they get a song together. I would like to give you an opportunity. To give you an opportunity if you want to come and pray. Don't worry about anybody might think or say. It's you and Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity. But the decision is yours. He'll never force himself on you. If you want peace, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Come today while you can. Nobody's going to judge you. We've all sinned and come short. Every one of us here today needed mercy and he gave it to us. Go ahead and sing. Make your way up here if you want to come and pray. Are you hurting and broken within? Make your way up. Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. I'm coming to give you my life. Jesus is calling. I want to be what you would be pleased with. Have you come to the end? Come on, just make your way. Do you thirst for a dream? Come today, there's no reason. Jesus name I pray. Jesus is calling. Bring your song.
Oh, 